You have repeatedly and passionately denied that Russia was behind the interference with our American <clears throat> presidential election. But as you know, the consensus view in the United States is that you did. That's what the 17 intelligence agencies concluded, and that's what the Republicans and the Democrats on the Congressional Oversight Committees who have seen the classified report have said. <clears throat> Are they all lying? They have been misled, and they aren't analyzing the information in its entirety. I haven't seen even once any direct proof of Russian interference in the presidential election in the United States. We met President Putin in St. Petersburg, his hometown and Russia's former capital. He grew up in a modest neighborhood here, became a KGB spymaster, and has been Russia's strongman for 17 years now. Welcome to the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. It was my job to moderate the forum, Mr. Putin's signature event, with more than 4,000 people in the audience, including world leaders, some sharing the stage. The normally wonkish gathering quickly became heated when I asked President Putin about Russia's attempts to hack the 2016 election. And what the experts say is that this couldn't have been faked, that it's a hundred factors that point to Russia. They say it's the forensics, it's the digital fingerprints, it's the IP addresses, the malware, the encryption keys, the specific pieces of code, that all of them, all of them point to Russia and none of them points to anyone other than Russia. What fingerprints, or hoof prints, or horn prints? What are you talking about? IP addresses. They can be invented, you know? There are a lot of specialists who can even make it so it comes from your home IP address, as if your three-year-old daughter carried out the attack. President Putin, there, there are reports today in the American press that, that the Trump administration took active steps to ease sanctions on, on Russia, almost immediately after Trump took office. Uh, was this possibility ever discussed between the Trump team and your representatives prior to President Trump being inaugurated? You know, I saw what was happening. To be honest, it was a big surprise for me, too. What they're saying is just nuts. I don't know where the people spreading this disinformation came from. It's some sort of catastrophe. After those testy exchanges, we weren't sure what was going to happen later when we sat down for our one-on-one -on -one interview and went right back to the issue of hacking. You had said for months that Russia had nothing to do with the interference of the American election. And then, this week, you floated the idea of patriotic <coughs> hackers doing it. Why the change and why now? I hadn't said anything. It's just that French journalists asked me about those hackers. I told them the same thing I can tell you. Hackers can be anywhere. They can be in Russia, in Asia, even in America, Latin America. They can even be hackers, by the way, in the United States, who very skillfully and professionally shifted the blame, as we say, onto Russia. Could you accept that? In the midst of a political battle, by some calculations, it was convenient for them to release this information. So they released it, calling out Russia. Can you imagine something like that? I can. Then the former KGB agent floated a Cold War conspiracy theory about U.S. dirty tricks. There is a theory that Kennedy's assassination was arranged by the United States Intelligence Services. So if this theory is correct, and that can't be ruled out, then what could be easier in this day and age than using all the technical means at the disposal of the intelligence services, and using those means to organize some attacks, and then pointing the finger at Russia? For the record, U.S. intelligence has concluded Mr. Putin himself ordered the disruption of the election. Regardless, President Putin said the U.S. should be the last country to accuse Russia of meddling. I will tell you something that you probably already know. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But the United States, everywhere, all over the world, actively interferes with the electoral campaigns of other countries. Put your finger anywhere on the map of the world, and everywhere you will hear complaints that American officials are interfering in internal electoral processes. But with, with respect, that, that's, that sounds like a justification. It doesn't sound like a justification. It sounds like a statement of fact. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. But I repeat, we don't even have to do that. 
presidents come and go, and even the parties in power change. But the main political direction does not change. That's why, in the grand scheme of things, we don't care who's the head of the United States. We know more or less what is going to happen. And so in this regard, even if we wanted to, it wouldn't make sense for us to interfere. But the FBI, Congress and a special counsel are nonetheless investigating Russia's interference and whether the Trump team was in on it. A special counsel has been appointed uh, to investigate <coughs> contacts between your government and the Trump campaign. You've said that your ambassador, Kislyak, was just doing his job, right? So what exactly was discussed in those meetings? There were no meetings. I, you understand? There were no meetings. When I saw this, my jaw dropped. No meetings between Ambassador Kislyak and anybody from the Trump campaign? I have no idea. I'm being completely honest with you. I don't know. The routine job of an ambassador. Do you think that from all over the world or from the United States, the ambassador reports to me every day who he meets with or what they discuss there? That's complete nonsense. Do you even understand what you're asking well, or you're not? his boss. Listen, his boss is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Do you think that I have time to talk to our ambassadors every day, all over the world? Complete nonsense. Among those under scrutiny is the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. At a meeting with Russia's ambassador last December, he reportedly tried to establish a secret communications channel with the Russian government. This was a proposal, a proposal by Mr. Kushner. I don't know about this proposal. No proposal like that came to me. Mr. President, did Jerry try to set up a back channel to the Russians? Have you gone back to speak with the ambassador about what was in those discussions he had with Jared Kushner, with anybody else from the Trump campaign? No. Never? No, I haven't. Aren't you interested? No, because had there been anything significant, he would have reported it to the minister. The minister would have reported it to me. There weren't even any reports. There is nothing to even talk about. <clears throat> there wasn't even any kind of specific discussion about sanctions or anything else. For me, this is just amazing. You created a sensation out of nothing. And out of the sensation, you turn it into a weapon of war against the current president. Well, this is, you know, you're just, you people are so creative over there. Good job. Your lives must be boring. Michael Flynn hasn't had a boring life. In 2015, he attended an event with President Putin in Moscow. He was later hired and then fired as President Trump's national security advisor and is now being investigated for his Russian connections. Did you know General Michael Flynn? He came over here for a dinner, uh, a photo of which has been widely circulated in the American media. What was the nature of your relationship with him? <clears throat> You and I, you and I personally have a much closer relationship than I had with Mr. Flynn. You and I met yesterday evening. You and I have been working together all day today, and now we're meeting again. When I came to the event for our company, Russia Today, and sat down at the table, next to me there was a gentleman sitting on one side. I made my speech, then we talked about some other stuff, and I got up and left. And then afterwards I was told, you know, there was an American gentleman, he was involved in some things. He used to be in the intelligence services. That's it. I didn't even really talk to him. That's the extent of my acquaintance with Mr. Flynn. <laughs> but what about his relationship with President Trump? I would get along with Russia, and I'll get along with Putin. And he's not going to make us look bad anymore. But we're going to get along. There have been questions in America about Donald Trump's finances. He hasn't released his tax returns. There have been questions about this secret Russian dossier, which he says is fake, but which purports to have blackmail information in it generated by the Russians. There have been <clears throat> questions about the communications between the Kremlin and the Trump campaign, all of which has Americans asking, do you have something damaging on our president? Well, this is just another load of nonsense. Where would we get this information from? Why did we have some special relationship with him? We didn't have any relationship at all. There was a time when he used to come to Moscow, but you know, I never met with him. We have a lot of Americans who visit us. Right now, I think we have representatives from a hundred American companies that have come to Russia. Do you think we're gathering compromising information on all of them right now or something? Are you all, have you all lost your senses over there?
virtually every person we've Toward the end of our conversation, we moved away from the election controversy to President Putin's reputation for repression. Many Americans hear the name Vladimir Putin and they think he runs a country full of corruption, a country in which journalists who are too critical could wind up <coughs> murdered, a country in which dissidents uh, could wind up in jail or worse. To people who believe that, what is your message? I want to say that Russia is developing along a democratic path. That is certain. And no one should have any doubt about that. But Why do you feel you have the right to ask us these kinds of questions and do it all of the time, to moralize and to give us lessons on how to live? We're ready to listen to comments when it's done constructively, with the goal of establishing a relationship, creating a common environment. But we will absolutely not accept when these sorts of things are used as an instrument of political conflict. I want everyone to know that. That's our message.